Alright guys, all you need to know is one day I was scrolling through YouTube and I saw this weird ass video. So basically we're just going to be uh, figuring out the story. What is going on? Let's start with episode one. Episode one takes place in chapter one in the uh, castle. In Lance's castle, place in the, in the basement. Going through the prisons, we go to the far left and find this one prisoner who I'm pretty sure is not in the game. Uh, zoom in, unblur. I don't know what that is. It's red. I don't know if it's the, <laughs> it's, it's the video advertises itself as an unused prison room. Uh, in the description he says, I've been digging through Deltarune's files and I found a room that was supposed to be in chapter one. Uh, as we get into the rest of the chapters, these descriptions get less and less credible. I'm pretty sure half of this stuff is not actually in the game, but uh, either way, we see the player character talk to the prisoner and he says, Oh, hello. Did you bring food this time? Uh, you get the yes or no option. We don't get to pick, unfortunately, because of the video, so he picks no. The guards always either forget to bring my food or they bring some inedible junk. It's ridiculous and a total violation of my rights. They're gonna be so sorry once I figure out what a lawyer is. So yeah, uh, uh, looks like a prisoner of, of the king guy, who I forgot the name of, who is being treated unwell. I guess if it is an unused asset, Toby Fox thought it would be too dark to have a prisoner starving to death, is my guess. Uh, he talks to the prisoner again and he says, I'm a prisoner man in a prisoner land. Won't someone finish my dialogue tree? So yeah, unfinished lines. Do after castle layout. So I guess notes to himself saying, do this once you're finished with the castle. But admit, either he forgot about it or he just didn't want to use it. He talks to it a third time and he says, you know, people like to tell me these bars aren't here to keep you in. They're here to keep us out. Why can't it be both? Am I not a danger to other people? Don't they want me locked away? And by talking to it a fourth time, he just says, you're making me uncomfortable. Please leave me alone. So, so far, nothing too unusual. A little bit creepy. A little bit disturbing in the way that he and there's a tiktok ad oh, okay in the way that he is not fed and is pretty much starved by the guards and that's pretty much all there is to this on to episode two all right episode two is titled unused castle town cutscene with the description saying still digging through files this is a weird one uh basically takes place in chapter two either at the start or the end i'm pretty sure it's the start and we're going into the castle where we meet Rousey! Susie, if you want to bake a cake with me next time, then you've got to learn my cooking song. Um, alright. It goes like this. Double, double. Toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Baking mints and homemade stew. Delicious meal for me and you! Well, as long as I get a, a cake out of it. So yeah, uh... The cauldron, <laughs> the cauldron in the middle, it's definitely like a, I don't remember where the fucking thing from, but it's a witch from somewhere. Maybe Alice in Wonderland. No, the uh, Wizard Oz, I think. Anyway, we walk past the rooms that Rousey made for us into that last one that he never let us in, in the first game. Door blocked. Enter. Ignoring the, t the fucking rope or whatever. We go into the room to see a very large pit. What's the music like? I have it, I have it turned off, I don't know. Very disturbing music. It sounds like whispers, or like gust of wind. Well, not gust of wind, but you know what I mean. Windy. We go over to the hole and interact. There is a hole at the center of your mind. It is a vastness that is too great for you to consider. If you fell in, rather than dying on impact, you would most likely suffocate first. There are unpleasant voices rising from the bottom, echoing off the walls for what could have been thousands of years. They remind you of pain. They remind you of the emptiness. They remind you of the Chris! Susie! Get out of that room immediately, bro! When I first watched that, that shit jump scared the hell out of me, bro. Rousey pulls us out of the room, and Susie fucking angry as ever, asks, Dude, what the hell are you talking about? I'm sorry for yelling at you two, but that room is extremely dangerous. You could have seriously hurt yourselves. Didn't you see the velvet rope? Oh, it is rope. I knew it. Well, at least you're both safe. Just make sure to follow proper rope decorum next time. What does that mean? Fine, whatever. It may seem innocuous now, but later on, it is very... Very important, and it just skipped to the next episode. Holy shit. So, watching it now, I'm sure p to most people it would not make any sense, but in hindsight, after watching the whole series, it makes quite a bit of sense. Except for the cake bit at the start, I still don't know what that means. Maybe it's, uh, well, maybe I'll explain after. For now, let's move on. Also, keep in mind the line at the start about there being 
a hole in your mind. Let me just take the time now to say if you're enjoying the video, please subscribe to Ash Vale Lane, the creator of this series. I'll link them in the description. Uh, please check out the series. They are very underrated in my opinion. At the time of recording this, they're only at 6,000, higher than me, but like still. Go check them out, go give them some love and support, tell them how much you love the series, and ask them about the trout population. Episode 3 uh, is called Misplaced Text Chains, and in the description it says, So what I think happened here is dialogue from a different map was accidentally placed in this early version of the classroom. One of the later episodes will show us the room itself, but right now, as Chris talks to each of his classmates, they come up with a dialogue box of Noel talking about jewelry and stuff. Basically, without spoiling anything, it details a possibly unused part of chapter 2, where Chris and Noel look into a jewelry store, and Noel just basically talks about stuff in her life. Most of it is more or less irrelevant to the series, but something that sticks out to me is at the end, when you finally reach your desk and Noel says it's beautiful you interact with it again it's beautiful it's so beautiful again can't we play pretend please I promise it will be really fun can you just let me pretend for a bit then Chris turns around and the video ends. Okay, well, uh, basically, all I can say is keep one of those last lines, let's play pretend, is probably the most important thing to come out of this episode, in my opinion. So, also keep that in mind. Now, let's move on to the next episode. So, episode 4 is titled Dinner Unused Cutscene, and the description goes, I wonder why this was removed. Basically starts off with us at the cafe. I don't remember where exactly in the game it is, but we find Catty, or Deltarune's version of Catty, and she asks us if we want to hang out with her on her break. So suddenly everyone in the room leaves. I guess that's part of the reason why it was removed, because it was unfinished, and we start talking to her, except she's on her phone and Chris never talks, so it goes about as well as you expect. But then she starts saying, So Susie's with cool with you, huh? Alright. You think she'll actually help with the project? Or are you just going to do everything? I mean, I probably won't do much either. Mostly because Jockington does most of the work for me. We'll work on it together. Whatever. Catty! Your break's up! Ah. Later, Chris. And the room goes back to how it was before. At the end of the video, Chris tries to call home, but doesn't work. And the video ends. So this video, this episode, I'm pretty sure is irrelevant to the story of the series. I'll come back to it at the end where I summarize what I think is going on. But I think the most important part would be Chris calling home and failing, I think. This one's a bit of an enigma to me, I'm not gonna lie. Episode 5 is titled Susie Phone Dialogue with a description I keep finding stuff the more I keep looking. Why hasn't anyone else posted this stuff? Basically most of the video is just uh, Chris calling Susie in strange places. Uh, first at the school, next in the library, next in Asgore's house, then at the lake. But most of them are pretty irrelevant, I think. Except for the lake part. Susie loves the ocean. She thinks it's cool. She thinks there's sea monsters in the ocean. Finished dialogue later. So yeah, looks like unfinished Susie dialogue. But then, if you call her again, ring ring. Ring, ring. Is she wrong? Are there monsters within the rolling fields of blue? You hate this place, don't you? It's not even a beach. It's a lake. You wish the tide would swallow this place whole. So you'd never have to look at it again. There could be sea monsters out there, if you want. Do you want to check? Holy shit, is that Jesus? So the most important parts of this would be would be Susie telling Chris that she hates this place. Except we don't know whether it is Susie's thoughts or Chris's. Why does he hate this place? Well, keep watching to find out. 
Episode 6 is titled Test Room, and in the description it says, I think this room would have been the Scarlet Forest, but I'm honestly not sure. And the first time I watched the series, I skipped it and I missed nothing, so we're gonna skip it too. One important part about this would be the comments. I wonder what effect this will have on the Trout population. I've got no idea what that means, but I think it's funnier that way, so I'm not gonna look into it. And also the fact that the placeholder characters are giant X's, which will be uh, used again in a bunch of the later episodes. Episode 7 is titled Cyber Field TV Room. Description, I guess they moved the set piece to the end of the chapter. Uh, basically, a bunch of TVs in Cyber World, and we look at the advertisements. I don't think there's anything too interesting uh, until the end part but also the uh comments damn the terror population won't like this and yeah at the end of it it stops showing us commercials and instead we get a description about a scene playing out dot 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 you see two kids playing by a lake bed they appear to be arguing with each other one storms off and leaves forever the other kid stares into the sunset no one is there for them you turn off the tv Chris did not like that one bit. So, I'll just say it now. The kid, the two kids, Frisk, not Frisk, Chris and Azriel. So we see what the importance of the lake is, and why Chris was Jesus walking all over it. And we're left with the question, why were the two kids fighting? And why did Azriel leave forever? Episode 8, it's titled Unused Boat Cutscene, and oh my god, there it is again. The description goes, I very... A very early version of the boat cutscene in chapter 2. So we start off in somewhere in Cyber World. Chris and Susie, not Susie, Chris and Rouse get on a boat and they start talking. I mean, there was a time in the. Okay, I can't. I'm pretty sure most of this is irrelevant. So at some point, we get three dialogue options about Lancer, Noel, and you. The first two uh, could be in the real game, don't really have any relevance to the series, but when we try and talk about you, either talking about Rouse or the player, it doesn't let us do it. Sometimes I wonder what I would be like if I hadn't met you. Obviously I, I knew you and Susie would show up one day, but what if the prophecy was wrong? I think I would have kept waiting for a while, probably for a long time. I'd check at the edge of the castle town every day, then every two days, then once a week, every two weeks, monthly. I'm not sure when I... I skipped the fucking... Okay, I'm pretty sure this isn't important. Uh, the town is pretty much empty. Oh shit, I'm reading a comment right now. Oh my god. We'll leave that for the end. <laughs> Just a note for when you guys have watched the, the, the series. After after this video don't check the comments if you want to be spoiled check it after you watch the whole series because oh my god there is a lot of stuff that i think i missed jesus christ okay anyway on to the next episode number 10 is titled the lake in the description it goes why am i the first to see this at this point i think it's pretty obvious that this is not part of the original game because oh look who it is what's this guy doing out here would you like to go for a walk and yep chris starts jesusing all over the river except we go further than i think we're supposed to, and Chris just keeps going and going until he walks off screen. Yeah, someone explain to me what the fuck this is. Attack 14, Def 2. It smells like teamwork. Hey Chris, where are you going? You seem to be heading pretty far out there, buddy. Water can get really choppy the further you from land you are. What? How were you able to do this? Why not? It's not exactly the most extraordinary thing to happen to you. Where do you draw the line between fantasy and reality? Where can you? Do you even want to? There is a massive rumbling far beneath the surface. Do you know how to swim? Just in case. Perhaps this is temporary? Wearing down the fabric of lit line and end, it went too fast. Overuse, creating holes. Also, I wouldn't want you to drown. A trumpeting cry, echoing deep, deep below. Are you enjoying this? It is quite scenic. Are you ever going to answer my hypothesis? Or 
Or am I just going to keep talking to myself here? Very funny. Tell me when you found the other side, okay? The steely grey waters bleed a terrifying darkness, and yet it appears to you shaped as an equal, but still, the presence consumes the si skyline. Uh, and it ends. Okay, so, uh, I fucking forgot everything that happened in this, hold on. So, the line about fiction and reality, relating back to the can we just play pretend line that Noel said, except I think that also was about Frisk and not Noel. And the other thing to pay attention to is the rumbling from below, that if you believe a certain theory about this series, which I will get into at the end of the video, uh, will make sense. If you don't, then it probably doesn't make sense to you, like it doesn't to me, but you know, on to the next episode. Episode 11 is titled School Early. The description is, I'm not sure if this is an early version of school or if you're just ahead of schedule, and it's the trout. Seems like most of this is just stuff from the original game, but I think it looks slightly different. I may just be tripping. Uh, there's new paintings on the walls. A photography contest a few weeks ago. This one was taken near the place you were living at. Some more strange looking artwork. And at the very right, the room of the dark world from chapter 1. Strange. It was supposed to be new. You go into the closet. And spot a few items on the thing. A pile of burnt twigs. A burnt quill. A small animal bone. A watch damaged page ripped from a book. A paper fortune teller, but with stuff. A shard of petrified wood, and a large, jagged, rotten tooth. The items almost seem ritualistic in nature. However, there is one more item that you almost missed. It's a small piece of molted skin. Despite the darkness, you can tell that it's pale purple. Chris then goes to his cell phone, and again tempts, attempts to call home, before walking out to the left. Jesus Christ, now, each of those items that Chris, Chris looked at represents something. If the blue feather didn't tick you off, then the purple skin definitely will. Let's have a look at the thing again. I found this comment by Myth Stuff the Home. So purple skin, Susie, obviously. Uh, blue quill, Birdly. Burnt twigs, probably Noel, her antlers. Uh, paper fortune teller, Caddy, since occult or whatever. Oh, that's it. I feel like there was one more that we missed, right? What's the comments say? Uh, oh, Jagged Tooth MK. Small animal bone, probably Jockington. This one guy put the fucking characters as their positions in the room, bro. I don't, I can't remember that shit. Uh, Timmy looks like a lot like a cat. Was there cat stuff? I forgot. Water damage, torn out pages, Chris, apparently. But what does this all mean? Well, for the theory that I that I have, it relates to the to the phrases "let's just play pretend" and "fiction from reality." But again, we'll get into that later. So let's move on to the next episode. Episode 12 is pretty fucking weird. So it's got the comment is Papyrus's house, and in the description it says, "I guess we're going to meet him in the later chapters." Stop lying to us, you piece of sh basically. We walk around the house doing random things. TV says, please don't turn it on. Rapira says he loves us. There's a trash can on the table. The bone says corpse. A little bit threatening. But next to Sansa's, where Sansa's door would usually be, is a letter. The note reads, rules cards. Rules for the trans-dimensional door usage. One, know your location beforehand. If you don't know where you're going to go, then you won't be able to go there. Two, only three people can use it at once. If more than three people try to use the door, then the door will lock itself and stick its tongue out at you. 3. Don't be mean about the door's tongue. It is very sensitive about it. Just don't say anything. 4. Don't try to go to the space between the doors. Transdimensional doors are fueled by magic we do not understand yet. While in travelling, try not to drift from the path during transit. We may not be able to save you if you are lost between the two doors. 5. No funny business. Self-explanatory. And then if we try to enter the door, it says not this one. So what's the deal with this episode? I'm pretty sure it's just a uh, exposition dump for the door situation which will come into use in another episode but anyway time to move on to the next episode episode 3 is titled unfinished shop and the description is it's so beautiful uh basically i'm pretty sure this is the place where the uh unchained text boxes thing took takes place as it is a jewelry store in chapter 2 where you should be with noel there's the uh x placeholder thing not much of interest in here until you get to the end. 
It's a brooch. It's big and very beautiful. It would be a delightful present, especially for her. She's done so much for you. She took you in as her own. She deserves a thousand brooches. But even if you had the money for them, you wouldn't be able to give it to her. Why? Because you don't know where she is. And then it ends. So who, who is narrator talking about? Well, two options come to mind. Noel and Torio, as they are like the only two people Chris knows. Or Alphys, but like I doubt it'll be for Alphys. I'm leaning more towards Torio because I've read I've watched the whole thing. <laughs> but if it is Torio, why do you not know where she is? Where did she go? Well, even I'm not sure, but I feel like one of the theories at the end of the video should explain. But anyway, the episode 14 is where things start to get very very interesting i say this on a lot of my videos holy shit the title is 14 early intro scene and the description is according to the metadata this was made right after chapter one was released starts off in the in the home with one of the placeholders running towards chris i we can assume it would be toriel if this is an early version of the chapter 2 ch cutscene, which is quite likely as the text box goes chapter 2 open ctsc Text box one. Wow, what a twist. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. Get into hole. Very, dis very descriptive notes from Toby Fox. The hole may be related to the, uh, to the hole in episode two. Maybe not. We interact with the window, and it tells us that the house will be gone. What does this mean? Where is it going? Only one of those questions will be answered. Episode 15 is called Doorway, and the description is, I don't know what this means. Luckily for them, I do. It starts off in chapter 2, Root's card is blocking the door, that I think was supposed to go in chapter 2, but either way, we're not going there, because the doorway has something for us. But also, the queen has disappeared, apparently. It's a door. Where will you go? You s Seems Chris picks, picks a mysterious fourth option and appears in the in-between, as foreshadowed by the earlier episode, I can't remember which one, but the papyrus one. We see Chris walking in... <laughs> and eventually, dialogue boxes start showing up. The colours coil and writhe, creating recognisable shapes for fleeting moments, before they fade into the churning hue. A fog of sunset, Ethernia. As it roars, the sound emanates from inside your head, toiling like a tower bell at midday, floating outwards to join the nightmare choir of unearthly noise and song. Its presence consumes the skyline. Most people are not prone to the anonymity. Anonymity when confronted with an animal lesser than them. In fact, the initial reaction is one of benevolence and assistance. A bird flies into a house, and we gently nudge it back into its proper environment. An abandoned cat begs for food, and it is given a scrap to last it the morning. We imprint on animals and offer shelter until their expiration. Help will come when asked. Eventually, Chris stops walking and pulls out their cell, but they are unable to call anyone. Oh, never mind. But the numbers are unrecognizable. They call the first one, and someone quite, and someone sounding quite annoyed with Chris picks up. Ring, ring. Leave me alone! You keep following me around all day. It's weird. You're so weird. Do you even know how to talk to people? Stop crying. You've been bothering me all day. 
I'm not dealing with this. Why can't you make friends with someone else? I don't want to play with you. Please, leave me alone. You're making me uncomfortable. And stop telling people that you're my brother. And the phone hangs up. You can't go back to where you came. Not this far in. Do you want to go home? Yes. Keep walking. It's a door. Will you go? And then the video ends. So like I said before, I'm pretty sure this is what the papyrus episode was warning us about. And with the phone call, I'm pretty sure that is what Asriel and Friss were saying in their arguments at the lakeside. We hear Asriel yelling at Chris about how he's been following him and how he can't make friends because the guy doesn't talk ever and how strange he is. So that's probably why in the TV episode it says like the other one left forever because it's like Asriel stopped hanging out with Frist with Chris, I guess. Or that he left for college because Chris was such a weirdo. Or a third option that we'll get into at the end of the episode. <laughs> how many times have I said that now? Anyway, with this done, we go on to the next episode. Episode 16, possibly the craziest. It's the one that got me into the series. Episode 16, Roaring Town. We start the next episode right where we left off with Chris coming out of the other side of the door, which appears to be the uh, one that people theorize Agasta is hiding in, at the bottom of town. After making our way back to town, we realize that things have changed. The NPCs are all greyed out. The overall hue is darker, I think. I don't know, I haven't played Deltarune in a while. And the dialogue options are very uh, strange. The priest starts talking about the angel coming down again and the colors of the sky. The bunny kid starts talking about the entire area being covered in trees and, and the trees screaming. Town Hall Bear tells us about a new lord telling everyone to stay inside and a little bit of human racism, which may be relevant to the story. The library has some very strange <laughs> ritual going on and Alphys is not doing so well. Chris, you don't need to come to school today. There was something spreading around the kids. I think it came from the water fountains. They couldn't be allowed to leave, but they were crying so much, I didn't know what to do, so I boarded them up with every window, but they kept poking little fingers out, I didn't know what to do, so I smashed you front of them until it under- which, which, okay, what, what the fuck, do you rise it so fast? I know, they should just sit still, they should just sit still and wait there, until, until, sorry Chris, what were you saying? What the fuck, Alphys? From there, it doesn't get much better, the hospital is closed. I've had enough of this, of wriggling things dug into the bone marrow, of faces erupting into dark red hives and treating burns that reduces the entire body to scar. It's sickening. I hate my job. If you get- if you hurt yourself, grow up, baby. Feet, pound, run, blood, pumping, sheep tough, close shop, pain strikes through feet, stinging, flesh tears, <laughs> what the fuck? The chase never ends. I can't sleep. As you approach, you see it chewing on the police tape. Its head shakes back and forth. You can only see the whites of their eyes. You decide to turn around. I was working when the change happened. I got out of there once everyone started to climb over the counter. But I can't take the suit off. I thought it was stuck to me because of the panic and sweat. But I tried taking it off one of the gloves. It was excruciating. I had to stop when I saw this red stain in my wrists. Why couldn't I have just have gone batshit crazy instead? An increase in violence has erupted nationwide. We recommend that everyone shelter in a place until the crisis has passed. Stay where you are. We will find you. Is that blood in the bin? Oh yeah, and did I forget to mention that Sans is gone? Like, not just like Sans himself. He took his- FUCKING HOUSE WITH HIM! But the worst one by far is Noelle. You can see her in a normal spot, waiting outside the fence. Oh, hey Chris. Mum locked me out of the house. She says that she's scared of me. But it's okay. 
I've been sleeping on the cold concrete sidewalk, eating small ants, flies, grasshoppers, moths. My teeth have been rotting away in my mouth all the time. I drink the water from the lake and it makes my stomach writhe as if it were alive and trying to escape my body through my throat. The flesh has been twisted into a form of pure overarching ag agony that I'm trapped inside until further notice. You should go home, Chris. Your family is waiting for you. Bro, what the hell, man? What happened to Noel? Once we finally reach your house, we, uh... The... Damn, they were right, it really is gone. What does any of this mean? Bro, I don't fucking know. You, even after watching the whole series, I've got no clue. I think it has something to do with how Chris, like, perceives everyone else. as Because, like, he's a weirdo, and so he's, like, an outcast. Or... Fuck, I don't fucking know. Because maybe, maybe it has something to do with him going into the in-between. Who knows? It's my favourite, though, because it's creepy as shit. I could probably make an entire video on this alone, which I might. On to the next episode, chapter 7. Chapter 7 is titled, Even More Susie Phone Dialogue. And the description says, she sounds really scared. Boy, I wonder why. Ring ring. Chris, I feel so cold. So empty. It's like something inside me that's always been there. That I've never noticed. Is now, missing. And I keep having these flashes. Visions. A house. A note. A bedroom. The lake. When I try to relax, those images just keep appearing in my head. It's like I can't even control my own thoughts. I try to think them away, try to remind myself of who I am, but it's getting harder and harder. And I'm just... so tired. Chris, I'm scared. Click. That's enough. Stagnation leads to entropy and decay. Seek truth and awaken from this terrible dream. And it ends. So, Susie is being, uh, is, has been seeing the things we've been seeing, I think. All I know is, at, by the end, by what she means as dream, is either related to the let's play, let's play pretend stuff, and all that combination thing that I talked about before, or it has something to do with us falling out of the in-between and all that. Anyway, on to episode 18, it's titled Bedroom, description, question mark. Start, we start off in our house, and we see Chris making their way to the bedroom. Once we get there, we realise that our part of the room looks a bit different to how it, we recognise it. And on Azriel's side, we see the placeholder character, in this scenario representing Azriel, which shows that this is probably a flashback of some time in the past. Well, I guess you're sleeping in my room. Your bed's on the right, if you hadn't guessed. Did you bring any stuff with you? Do you like talk at all or express emotion with your face I'm sure now how to pick him there's a knock at the front door we should head out now as Frisk leaves to go downstairs we realize the room seems to be getting longer and longer. We stop by one of the mirrors, to which it says, Meet. Fake. Liar. And then the video ends. Very strange one there. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory. Seems to be a flashback to when Chris moved in, and things did not start off great between the two brothers. But I don't know what the mirror stuff means. Especially the first part. <laughs> Meat. Very strange. And it seems like the corridor is getting bigger. I wonder if that will have any impact on the next episode. Ooh. Episode 19 titled My House with description but starts us right where we left off. Standing right in front of the mirror and going down the ever expanding corridor. Eventually we walk off screen and end up walking through one of the doors. We, we go right in into another door, but that leads us into a shop. Something's going wrong with our house. I don't even know if this is a flashback anymore. We keep on making our way down to one of the other doors, and we see ourselves sleeping, until we finally go down the stairs, which seem to be extended. We continue traveling through our maze-like house now with doors in places that they where they shouldn't be, walls in places where there should be doors, mirrors that let you go into other 
doors and whatever this is, but eventually we make it into Toriyo's room, where there's a letter sitting on her front on her desk. To Chris's next foster parent. I knew that taking in foster kids would be more than a simple responsibility, but Chris is a lovely child. They are creative, imaginative, and a joy to be around. Although they do seem to have trouble connecting with kids his age, especially with my son, but they are eager for friends, even with a smaller group than other friends than other kids. I write to you, whoever you may be, because I believe Chris will have trouble adjusting to their new home. They don't seem to like change, and with our family moving away so suddenly, it will certainly be a challenge for them. They seem to re really connect with me as a parent, and I hope they have it in them to do the same with you. I hope you make it an excellent home for Chris. From Torio Dreamer. Exiting the room takes the player back into the corridor where they meet with a mirror that says there is one last thing left to do. Remove the delusion. Pull it out by the roots. Take strength in truth. When they get to the living room, the back, the outside starts to look a lot like the in-between. They make their way to the door, dark, and leave in their dark world gear. And that's the end of episode 19. So they really just abandoned Chris, like what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, plenty self, pretty self-explanatory as well. Torio, uh, what's the word for it? Orphaned Chris? They left Chris, I think is what I'm hearing. To Chris's next foster parent, yeah. So I don't know why. Uh, a theory we'll get into at the end of the video may explain it <laughs> again. Uh, or it's just the fact that Chris is a weirdo that <laughs> That's probably the more likely one, in my opinion, and the one I believe. But yeah, sucks to suck. And the part about the, the delusion also related to the so let's stop playing pretend and whatever, which will also be explained at the end. But now, onto the final episode as of recording this video. Episode 20, titled Unused Revelation, with the description Climax. Immediately we make our way into the school, heading straight to the Dark World. Once we get there, we go to the hall from Chapter 2 and immediately jump in. Bro, what the hell is this? As we make our way through this weird-ass landscape, we find these little red, uh, things? I don't know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe them. And each one of them gives us a unique bit of dialogue. Everyone had left them. Though they knew it was not out of hate or malice, the cold emptiness in their heart provided no comfort. On those cold December nights they dreamed, a beautiful dream of knives and cartilage. The detachment, which once had been a defense mechanism against the world, was now their self-appointed prisoner. Their abandonment had insulated walls of wet grey matter. As the crushing loneliness finally sapped the joy from their hearts, they found solace in delusion and madness. To a desperate child, Anything can become a toy for play. In the forsaken house, a common something molted its skin. They found it and fashioned it into a companion, an abrasive young ally. A kind thing who would bite and rip and claw and slash and tear and burn. It felt so good to be wanted, protected. A pile of twigs was collected over 20 days. It took them 20 more to assemble it into a perfect friend. Radiant, kind, lovely, and willing to do anything for them. And she will. A blue feather, cat hairs, a collection of toenails, dead skin from a rash. They created so many friends. But they all were made with the horrible emptiness. They could never love like they loved. Not without intervention. They called into the lake. Into that hated place. Most people are not prone to anonymity when comforted with an animal lesser than them. In fact, the initial reaction is one of benevolence and assistance. What assistance they gave, and what a world they made. But pieces kept rotting off like petals in the wind, despite the seemingly vast power of the thing that holds the world. Minds would boil inside heads, lands and houses putrefy into sickly mulch. It was so wonderful. It was so horrible. It was joy. It was agony. But a corpse should be left well alone. After speaking with the final thing, they walk up and off screen. But before we get into the next part, can I take this opportunity to ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. We are a very small YouTube channel here and every subscriber really goes a long way in motivating me to make more videos. And 
uh, eventually getting us to 1,000, where we will be able to make money, hopefully. Anyway, this is a very long episode, so let's take some the time to, to recap what's going on. So, the pit from episode 2 came back, and according to it, we are inside the mind of Chris. Sounds like they were abandoned, they had no friends, again, probably because they're weird as shit. And we hear about how Chris made friends out of rashes, sticks, and old skin. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, then you probably know the, th my, the theory I've made by now. That Chris had imagined most of the things that we see in Deltarune chapter 1 and 2, and used it to entertain himself since he didn't have any friends to play with. That's about as far as my theory goes, but where does the corpse and stuff come in? Well... We see Chris walking up to the lake again. And we see what seems to be a silhouette of the two brothers having the argument we saw on the beat TV. After Azriel walks away, our Chris silhouette starts to morph into this white glob thing. What were you expecting? The nature of time demands that all things decay. And now you found a hole poked into the corpse skin of your world, crawling your way directly to the heart. This was a gift. What more do you want? Ah, you challenge an ochre and believe it to be the whole body, your entropy is forfeit to me. And the fight begins! What the fuck is that? Jesus Christ! If you want to watch the whole fight, go check it out in the description at the end of the video. But what's the most important is the name, Weeping Scar Tissue, and the nature of the attacks being silhouettes of the characters from Deltarune. Eventually, after sparing it, the Jesus scar tissue thing decides to let us go. A termite refusing to bite a lion. Not out of fear, but be because you wish not to cause harm, no matter how small. Is that why you choose to forsake your new world? Human, I have much to ponder upon. My gaze will turn elsewhere, and thus your lands will remember its nature. Do not attempt contact ever again. My kin may not be so understanding of your plights. Before I leave, Chris, did you enjoy my creation? Yes. Hmm. One last unique experience. Pride. Goodbye. And that's the final episode, as of editing this video. Anyway, now it's theory time. First off, my theory. So, as we see, there's a bunch of stuff about plain pretend, about reality and fiction, and Chris being a fucking weirdo, being alone his entire life. So my theory is that Chris's parents fucking left him or some shit. Gave him trauma, couldn't deal with him anymore, so they left, put him up for adoption. The Dreamer family uh, found him, uh, put him under their care, and Chris tried to make friends with the dreamer, bro the the only child, Asriel, but things did not go very well. At the lake, they had the argument where Chris stopped try, where Asriel confronted Chris, and he decided to stop uh, trying to be friends with him. So instead, Chris made his own friends. Uh, they weren't any good. They weren't. Uh, they, they weren't real, basically, which is what is meant by the. But they needed something extra, so he went to the lake again. And he found a corpse. So this corpse was powerful, as seen by the fucking Jesus Christ thing going on. And it's allowed all of his creations to be turned into life. All of his friends that he made and stuff. Which is Deltarune. And then if you want to go even further beyond that, there's the whole dark world being an imagination thing. It's like an imagination thing inside of an imagination. It's cra it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. I think it's a pretty good theory. It's a pretty cool series, but just wanted to get that out there. It's pretty fucking pretty dope, pretty scary, but a pretty cool theory as well. But there's another theory, which is a whole lot darker, somehow, and we will get into it after we watched an episode that released as I was editing, editing this video. Maybe it will uh, have more concrete evidence towards one theory or another, but let's just... Back at the fucking house. It's a for sale sign by the something something. Oh, there's the, the audio things in the way. Call home. Oh, it worked! It worked this time. <gasps> Hello, Dreamer residents. Oh, Chris. What a lovely surprise. How is the new family treating you? Where do we live now? 
That is wonderful to hear. I'm sorry Azriel is away at the moment, but I'm sure he'd love to talk to you soon. I would doubt that. I hope you're doing well. You can always call. I'm just on the other side of the phone. Goodbye. Well, it looks like things ended on nice terms. But where do we live now? Oh! Okay. Well, that was more wholesome than I expected. Well, it seems this final episode leans more towards my theory than the other theory that I saw in the comment. But I think I'll explain it anyway, because I alluded to it a bunch and I can't not. So here we go. Every time that I said theory at the end, most of the time, I was referring to this. So, while editing the video, I had to look into the comments of us. Well, I didn't have to, but I did. The comments of some of the things. And while looking at the comments, I saw this one from, from Gabriel xs 2 es ek Chris talks, uh, Rousey talks about a very specific pattern of what he'd do if Chris and Susie never showed up. He'd check every now and again at the edge of town to see if they finally appeared. If the theory about Azriel drowning is correct, then Rousey appears to be talk probably unintentionally talking about the pattern Chris followed at the lake after Azriel drowned. Probably referencing Chris having a small hint of hope after seeing Azriel show showing up over here, over there again with hope that he's still somehow alive. The rest is a little vague, but I can assume that blah, 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 blah. What's important is the theory that somebody drowned. In this episode, the comment says that Azriel is most likely the one that drowned. But in the Jesus episode, the one where Frisk was walking on water, the comment goes, where is it? By H4KSZ official, Chris drowned in town lake. Dark worlds and their adventure is their, is their imagination or their heavens slash hell. And Rousey is probably Asriel talking to himself on the lake shore. Second one is that Asriel is not Asriel. That Chris died uh, seems to be more people believing this one. And then there's this one guy is like, oh yeah, it must be Ness. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is like separate to whatever's going on in actual Deltarune, but hey, good theory. Maybe this is actually just all in the code and I've been fucking not believing him when he was right the whole time. What are they saying on the last episode? Oh yeah, the sea monster was the fucking corpse. G the Jesus corpse, oh my god. <laughs> it says, in the YouTube channel's description, it says, If I stop uploading daily, assume I'm dead. So either this isn't their last video, or Ashvale Lane dies tomorrow. Okay. Okay, I still don't know what this trout stuff is about. <laughs> Where the fuck? Did you do like other stuff before? Wait, it's a Gabriel guy! He's back! Well, that was an experience I can't say I didn't enjoy. This is 100% the ending to this- This 100% This is 100% the ending to this AIG. I gotta say, it's a nice one. The calm atmosphere, the regular colors, the unmodified background music. It's like you're back into the regular Deltron world. It legitimately, it legitimately feels like those times when you wake up from a really bad nightmare and you feel a better as soon as you notice everything is bad to not back to normal it, that none of it was real it's really neat blah 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 yeah chris doesn't have to go home to doesn't have a home to go to anymore but at least they're not stuck in a nightmare i thought they did have a home i thought they just got adopted by someone else l void excuse me okay well um basically i think my theory is correct i don't think anyone drowned i think the was a mon the sea monster is a giant kraken not is the fucking God guy, Jesus motherfucker, and I think that I am right. Get fucked. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Uh, tell me what content you want down below, and I am out.